Hey everybody! Today for you guys, I'm going to be filming my most disappointing reads of 2016. These are just books that I really had high expectations for going in and then it just completely fell flat. And some of these are just downright like awful books that I just wouldn't recommend. And then other ones are just like disappointing. And there is a difference. I mean, I can be disappointed in a book, but still overall kind of like it. But I can, you know, obviously downright just think a book is awful. And so these are uh, the books that I read during 2016 that I just have some kind of negative feelings about. So let's get on into it. I'm going to be looking down on my notes here, uh, just to kind of remind me a bit. Um, going in no particular order, the first one that I have is Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell. Obviously, this is going to be highly controversial. So if any of these books are books that you guys love, understand that you are totally welcome to have those opinions, just as I am totally welcome to have my opinions, and this is by no means an attack on anybody personally. They're just, you know, personal tastes. Obviously, reading is super personal, and books that I love, you guys might hate, vice versa. So, uh, Fangirl by Rainbow Owl was one that I had really high expectations for because I really, really do like Rainbow's writing. I loved Eleanor and Park. I thought that um, Landline was pretty good, and then going into this, I just read and heard so much hype about it that I was like, okay, okay, I'm really going to like this. And for me, it just, it just fell flat somehow. Um, I think I gave it a three star on Goodreads. It was cute and everything, but I found the main character to be a bit unrealistic with this whole fangirl thing. I mean, truly some of the aspects I felt like I could understand, but I know what it's like to be a fangirl about stuff. And there were parts that were really missing to that entire like fangirl lifestyle. Um, I really did like how the book handled some mental illness issues. I thought that that was really nice. But overall, the story to me was just exceptionally uninteresting and just very blah. Like the love interest, I thought that that whole thing was just cheesy and stupid and some of the things that were happening in the book I just called from the beginning and overall it just was not like it didn't have the emotional impact that Rainbow's writing typically has for me and I just really didn't find myself relating to the main character. It just was very kind of blah. Like I really expected this to be a good like four or five star rating for me and it just wasn't. Next is 13 Reasons Why, and this is by Jay Asher. This is a book that had tons of amazing blurbs, and I think received a bunch of different awards, and it was supposed to be some like deeply impactful book, and I thought it was just awful. It's about a boy who uh, is in high school, and he receives uh, this box of like cassette tapes from a girl who killed herself that went to the same high school, and it's basically the 13 reasons why she decided to kill herself. And First off, that entire premise I think is problematic. Like the idea that this girl is like so vindictive that she feels the need to like explain how certain people prompted her to do this and then like give the tapes to these people just to make them feel even more awful. Now some of the people did deserve it. But for example, even our main character, you find out like kind of what his whole, you know, purpose in receiving these tapes are and to me it was like, are you serious? Like really, that is how the author is going to decide to have given like a pretty likable main character these tapes and this is the reason why the girl decided to do this. Like it seemed completely unrealistic. But also just the reasons why this girl decided to commit suicide. I, you know, wanting to commit suicide obviously comes from such an awful, very, very dark place. And the reasons that she gave were very temporary problems that she almost immediately was able to find solutions to. And so I found it highly unlikely that they were reasons why she, someone would actually kill themselves. And I was reading some um, reviews on Goodreads and a lot of people actually said this, like people that have dealt with suicidal thoughts or have had friends that have dealt with suicidal thoughts or have really like, you know, gone to know somebody that has dealt with this. Like these just just aren't acceptable reasons and obviously people can kill themselves for many many different reasons but these just were so unrealistic and overall the book was just I just didn't buy it like I couldn't see this actually happening and I know that this may sound super insensitive but obviously this is a fictional book if this was something that was to actually happen maybe my thoughts would be different but coming from a fictional story I thought that the way it dealt with suicide was just awful and overall I thought the book was extremely problematic and I would not recommend reading it and especially to like the age group that's marketed to, I just see there being many issues with the story and the themes that are presented. 
Next is Iron King, and this is by Julie Kagawa, and this was a book that um, I think I was just doing some like digging on Goodreads trying to find new books to read, and this is one that kind of popped up, and I read the description, I thought it sounded interesting. It's basically about a girl whose dad disappears kind of early in her childhood, and then she grows up and realizes that her dad is like a fairy king, which makes her a fairy princess, and so she gets dragged into kind of like this portal that shoots her into the fairy world, and uh, the madness kind of ensues from there and basically she ends up getting hunted by like one kingdom and has to try to escape them while dealing with her father issues and like all this different stuff. Now this was a book to me that overall was just again it was just bad like I just did not like it. I thought the writing was horrible. Once I started reading it the plot line to me was really dumb and I had absolutely no interest. I thought the main character to be absolutely insufferable. I just did not like her at all and this book pulls some themes and characters from A Midsummer Night's Dream from Shakespeare and and the author literally took Shakespeare's work and in my mind kind of plagiarized it. Like she added no character development to these characters that Shakespeare had already set up. And to me that's problematic because it's like we're just expected to know these characters based on some other author's incredible work and you're just taking that and you're using that as a plot device and you're using that as your character development. Like no, I'm not okay with that. And so I really, really hated that and overall the story it just did not interest me. I got like halfway through it. This was a book that I almost DNF'd, but uh, over the year I actually did not DNF any books. That was kind of like a goal for me, and I did that successfully. Um, so I kept on reading it. It is a series. I don't understand why. I will not continue on, and I would never recommend this book to anybody. Next is another controversial one, especially even for myself, because it comes from a series that I love, and it's Air of Fire by Sarah J. Mass. Some people loved this. I can understand why, because this is taking our main character, Aelin. It's putting her in a very like independent situation where she's really having to deal with some conflicting inner stuff and even Sarah J Mass has said that this was like emotionally the hardest book for her to write and it's kind of like her favorite from her own series because it really shows a lot of character growth for our main character. I just found it to be very boring. I mean I understand why this book needed to happen and everything and obviously if you're reading the series don't let this detour you from it or anything. It's just for me all the other books in the series are incredible. I love them. They are like five star reads. And for me, this one was like maybe a three and a half. I just had such a hard time pushing through this for some reason. And I've never felt that way with any other Throne of Glass novel. And so for me, that's why it was just more disappointing. I didn't hate this book by any means. It still has a lot of my favorite characters in it. And it still is Sarah J Maas. So I love it for that reason. But um, it just was so meh for me in the mix of the series. And I know, like I said, that's a controversial opinion because for a lot of people, this is their favorite book in the series. I don't know why, just wasn't mine. Next is Althea and Oliver by Christina Moracho. I touched on this earlier in the year when I did a book wrap up and I talked about this. And this is a young adult contemporary novel about a girl and a boy who uh, are kind of like best friends growing up and then their story kind of develops into something more, at least the girl wants it to. The boy, meanwhile, has this disease that makes him sleep for like weeks on end. I forget exactly what it's called. He obviously struggles with this because he's in the middle of high school and this just completely takes away from his life. He's literally missing out on his life because he's sleeping. And like I said, uh, the girl meanwhile is kind of developing more feelings for him. Again, they've always been best friends growing up. They live really close together and they've just had that typical relationship. Um, I thought that this book kind of presents itself in a way that it's about, you know, friendship and love and then one event that can change everything. And the event in this book to me, again, if you want to talk about a problematic topic and the way that it's handled, for me this was that. I am very, very sensitive about this topic and so maybe that's why if you read this book maybe you'd understand. And so I just felt like this was just so poorly handled and after that happened I was just kind of checked out. I just didn't care. Also, um, this kind of suffers a little bit from that like John Green syndrome I like to call it where these are high school characters that are completely unrealistic for being high school characters. Like I have two little sisters and in high school, uh, whenever I go home Home, I'm around them obviously, I'm around their friends. This is just not how high schoolers act. I'm not saying every high schooler, of course there are exceptions, but for the majority I'm like really like all of your friends including yourselves, you guys are just like these extremely literate, like high vocabulary, super profound, like obviously wise above your ears kind of people. 
I just don't know if I completely buy that. And then some of the things too that like the characters go off and do are things that I would never do in high school. To me, that's just very unrealistic. And then it makes it really hard for me to relate to the characters and thus kind of relate to the novel and enjoy it. So I thought I'd really like this. I thought it was gonna be like a cutesy contemporary love story, but it really was just like a problematic, unrealistic uh, love story. I guess you could say, and so, yeah, not my thing. Next is The Graveyard Book by Neil Gaiman. This was a disappointing read because I love Neil Gaiman, and I went through a little bit of a Neil Gaiman kick at the beginning of this year, and so this was one of the books that I read during that, and uh, going in, I didn't realize that it was a children's story because, at least in my bookstore, it's put with just like the sci-fi lit uh, for adults, and so I I figured that's what it was, but after researching it more, it is like a children kind of maybe almost middle grade sort of story, and so I kind of feel like maybe if I would have had that expectation going in, maybe my thoughts would have been a little bit different, but this was again one of those books that was just very hard for me to not DNF because I just was having such a hard time getting through it. I really just wasn't connecting with the story. It's basically about a boy, it's kind of like a jungle book retake. It's about a boy who grows up in a graveyard and is raised by ghosts, and for whatever reason, it just wasn't interesting me. Um, obviously, this is like a fantasy novel, so I'm not critiquing it for not being relatable or anything. It's just that um, I just didn't find the story very compelling. I just didn't find it very interesting. I didn't really care to see what happened. And obviously, when that happens, it's disappointing. If you don't really care to read on, Really, what's the point? You're not gonna end up loving the book, and so that's how this was for me. All right, just two more to go. Next is Sublime. This is by Christina Lauren. And uh, again, this is another novel that I touched on in a book wrap-up, and this was just awful. I was in the mood for like a teen paranormal romance, which I mean really when you decide to go into that genre, like this is the risk that you are taking, but this was just so bad. Like it was, it, <sighs> Obviously, I'm not a big fan. Um, it was about a boy and then a girl ghost who start to fall in love and they're kind of like thinking, well, how are we gonna make this work? Like you're alive and I'm not and she can't like leave the grounds of this place and it's set kind of in like a boarding school setting and uh, basically the entire book, and I mentioned this in my book wrap up, is about these two trying to figure out how they can fuck and I just found that to be completely and I found that just to be so boring after like the first hundred pages. Like if the only thing about your relationship is sex and that's the only reason why you two are together and that's really the only thing that's keeping you going, then that's just dumb. And after a while, I just got so sick of it. The writing style also was interesting. It was the most like descriptive but overly descriptive overly metaphorical kind of writing I've ever read and it just got to the point where I was literally like I'd read something and I'd roll my eyes I'm like oh my god this is so dumb like it just was it just was bad like I thought again it was going to be kind of like a fun little teen paranormal romance and I don't expect those to be like literary classics or anything but when the story itself is just the plot line is basically nothing and the story is just stupid and it's written horribly I just don't yeah I just I'm just not into it and then very finally was another disappointing read because uh, this is a part of a series that I really got into and this is Origin by Jennifer L. Amartrow and this is in the Lux series and this is the fourth book obviously I can't give too much away because it is the fourth book but I just found the pacing to be a bit slow I found that it was just kind of one of those that maybe the main events that happened in it could have been added to another story or this just could have been like really condensed like it was a pretty long one and I just found a lot of it to be kind of unnecessary and I just didn't really care for it. Um, I think also when I was first reading this for some reason I had it in my mind that this was a trilogy so I got to the third one and then it kind of left off on a cliffhanger and I'm like oh my gosh this I thought that this was all that it was so when I found out that there was a fourth book that I had to read I was a little bit kind of like thrown off by that because I was expecting to read a trilogy so I had to kind of switch up my mindset a little bit and so I already went into this book with kind of like hesitant expectations a little bit because I really felt like this would have been like a great just trilogy and then it went on to like this I think it was like five book series and um, after I feel like the first three books they just started to drag they just started to get a bit long I felt like the author was trying to come up with all of these like 
surprise plot twist, but really they were kind of unnecessary because everything ends up getting resolved in the end anyways. Um, and like I said, I just thought that this one was just kind of meh out of the entire bunch. I think I gave it like a three star. That's all I have. These are my most disappointing and then just some straight up awful reads that I read in 2016. Uh, I want to reiterate again that if you liked any of these, please do not feel offended or anything. I know people hate these disclaimers, but as YouTubers, if we try to state our opinion like this, we often get very highly criticized for it. So I hope that you guys enjoy this and take it for what it is. Uh, thank you all so much for watching. Let me know if you had really any awful books that you read. I'd be interested to know, so maybe I can know what to stay away from in the comments down below. Um, but other than that, I will talk to you guys next time. Bye-bye.